A very good afternoon to everyone present here. With warm greetings, it gives me a great pleasure to extend a warm welcome on behalf of Department of Civil Engineering, Amity School of Engineering and Technology, Amity University, Haryana, conducting wonderful five days global workshop on overseas career and educational expo. Uh, so now I'm, I'm handing over to Dr. Naveen BP, sir, head of, this, uh, head of the Department of Civil Engineering, to give brief introduction to the speaker. Please, sir. Thank you, Dr. Nav uh, thank you, Dr. Praveen. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to five days global workshop on overseas career and education expo. Greeting from Department of Civil Engineering, Amity University, Ariana. Our main objective of workshop is to provide an overseas career counseling to help our students to identify the right study abroad course, which will match their skill and job expectation. This workshop will assist their aspiring students to select the right career based on their profile, which ultimately help them to succeed. Now I would like to introduce today's speaker, Mr. Arjun LM. He completed his MSc in Management and International Business, Nottingham, University of UK. He has five plus years of experience in international student recruitment. He is working as a UK team lead, international student recruitment. Also he is qualified CMI level seven certificate, practice personal development as strategic manner, manager, he helped 1,000 plus students to migrate the abroad. With this introduction now, I would request Mr. Arjun to deliver a talk on UK student visa roadmap. Thank you. Now it's over to you, Arjun. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, team. Uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining the session and uh, for your valuable time. And I am extending my gratitude to your team for supporting uh, this universities for the coming intakes like uh, May and September. So uh, for this session, mainly I would like to discuss more about the UK university general presentation. That is uh, how uh, students would like to go to this country. There are a lot of uh, countries like uh, the students would choose to study abroad, uh, mainly United Kingdom, USA, Canada, Australia. So I mainly concentrate on United Kingdom. This is a prime study destination. Why? There are a uh, lot of factors are affecting uh, for choosing this country. Uh, for example, in the academic wise, uh, or in the social life experience or in the entertainment purpose. Uh, apart from the academics, I'm saying that apart from the academics, does the student have the opportunity for a social life? Uh, will there be a space for entertainment? Will there be a space for internationals? You know, uh, coming with, uh, comparing with other English speaking countries, there are a lot of, uh, the, even the internationals are facing some issues, uh, yeah, depending upon the weather, will, will there be a racism? So this United Kingdom is a prime study destination and they can directly choose this country uh, without any hassles. And uh, I would like to explain more about some myths about studying in UK because uh, these uh, some factors like the weather is terrible all year long, studying in UK cost a fortune, high cost of living, no job certainty, getting PR. PR means in the sense uh, permanent residence in UK is impossible. Uh, if the international would like to go for a uh, migrated to other countries, uh, the UK getting PR in UK is impossible. Uh, UK degree don't hold any value. Uh, one year masters is not recognized across the world. IELTS, GRE and GMAT is mandatory. These are the myths about studying in the UK. And these points are being circulated uh, throughout the internet. And uh, those who are un uh, unsuccessful students have been spreading these kind of myths about studying in UK. So coming slides will explain you all about the realities uh, will the student faces in the UK. So uh, we can start from the map and the popular cities of UK. Most of the students are considered uh, this country as a UK. UK is not a country. It's a union of four nations, uh, that is England, Wales, Scotland, and Northland, Northern Ireland. So these are the uh, these are the countries, the union of four nations combining the United Kingdom. So this, the student wants to uh, go for the United Kingdom. That means they are eligible to study in any of these four countries, and uh, only one visa is issuing by uh, these countries. So uh, coming to England, uh, the capital city is London, and uh, Scotland is Edinburgh, Northern Ireland is Belfast, and Wales is a Cardiff. So we all know that uh, the universities are named after the cities. 
even in, in India as well, we have the University of Delhi, University of Mumbai, University of Goa. There are, the universities are named after cities. So I'm mentioning here the cities, uh, the London, uh, we have a London School of uh, Economics, uh, we have University of Birmingham, Manchester University, University of Leeds. So these universities are named after the cities. And here the symbols are just a symbolic representation of the cities. You can see there is a guard here. It's a Birmingham Palace guard, and this is a clock tower, and this is our main highlight, London Bridge, telephone booth, cup and tea, uh, cup of tea, umbrella. <laughs> These are the symbolic expression and double decker bus. So this is a symbolic expression, and it, once we are seeing the symbols, we have uh, generally remind the, this country, uh, the UK. So coming to the next uh, state, uh, slide, that is language, currency, time zone, weather, and population. So knowing a country means uh, the, knowing the cities, their language, currency, uh, the time zones, weather, and population. Uh, we can see, we all know that the official language is English, even though uh, the UK is a multicultural uh, country, that is, a lot of uh, international has been migrated to UK, and they have, you can see, more than 177 nationalities in the UK. So even though if it is any multicultural, the official language is English and the currency is called the Great Britain Pound and the currency conversion is uh, approximately 100 rupees. One GBP is equal to 100 rupees. And uh, for the timings, uh, uh, we know uh, some of them, uh, very few of them knows the time changing. That is uh, you, all the nearly uh, five and a half hours behind of India. That means, for example, uh, 1 p.m. in Indian time is uh, 7.30 a.m. in the UK time. And there is a time change. That is, in the winter time, it is uh, five and a half hours behind of India. And in the summer time, from uh, April to September, uh, in that meantime, the time, uh, we are four and a half hours behind of India. So these are the time change I would like to explain because most of them doesn't know this uh, time changing until you are in the UK. Or very few to if you if your friends would know this case they will explain uh, the uh, very interesting time changing uh, period of in, uh, of united kingdom and whether uh, mostly the temperature in the uk generally uh, ranges between 10 degrees celsius in winters and 30 degrees celsius at the peak of summers as you can see this this temperature uh, we have been uh, experienced in india in delhi we all know that in winter time it's nearly 10 degrees celsius and at the summertime, it's maximum up to 40. Uh, I'm, I'm from Kerala. So here uh, at the summer period, uh, it's around uh, 38, 40 degrees Celsius. So uh, if, if you are an Indian, uh, we definitely we can cope up with the UK temperature. If some places, for example, in the uh, northern region, highly northern regions, they do have in the winter period, they have a less than 10 degrees Celsius. And even in the very few of days, in two to three days maximum, they experience a minus degree, it up to maximum minus 10. Uh, for example, Scotland, uh, from you can see in the map, uh, the Scotland is here, it's a northern region. Here we can experience, I mean, the, the student would like to study in Edinburgh or in Glasgow, at the winter time, they experience uh, uh, in two to three days maximum, not in a whole month. A uh, very uh, few days, uh, the student will experience a uh, negative temperature, maximum up to minus 10 degrees Celsius. If the students are studying in here, England, Wales, or Northern Ireland, they don't experience that much uh, the horrible uh, temperature at all. So uh, that's, uh, that's I would like to share about the weather. And the population, we all know uh, this is a, a, a very uh, few population, that is 67 million, comparing to any other countries, it's a very few population. So they are welcoming the internationals uh, for they have a very big country and having a 67 million. So we, this is the general knowledge rule and every students who have to know this uh, for studying for UK would choose to study in UK. And coming to the next slides, uh, the students, the popular subjects to study in UK is engineering, management, arts, computer science, life science, hospitality management and culinary arts law and architecture. These are the popular subjects. That means in the engineering subject, uh, we do have a lot of uh, 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 general special, uh, super special courses, uh, for example, engineering management, 
uh, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, aeronautical engineering. There are a lot of various uh, subjects you can fall under engineering subjects. Uh, even in the same like management, we do have a lot of management courses, more than uh, 100 plus management courses. And also uh, you can see uh, there are specialized, some universities uh, in UK, there are uh, 121 UK universities. So apart from these universities, there are private universities also available in UK and they have very specialized courses and uh, uh, some universities are uh, known from the subjects. For example, engineering, uh, if the student wants to study an aeronautical engineering, there is a famous university called Cranfield University. It's a very famous university to study the aeronautical engineering. They have been in very uh, in top 50 rankings all over the world. They have been in, in between top 50 rankings. So if the student wants to study or they want to excel in that subject, they can specialize choose that university, Cranfield. I'm just saying an example, uh, if the student wants to uh, uh, study on those particular universities, they have the options available in UK. Uh, the student wants to study hospitality, management and culinary arts. Uh, we have a university in Northern Ireland called Ulster University. It's a very big, good university to study the hospitality, management and culinary arts. For the life sciences also, Ulster University is very famous. And for the university uh, law, you can uh, best option is University of Law. They do have 15 campuses in UK. I'm just saying the examples. Uh, so these are the popular subjects uh, to study in UK. And coming to next slide, uh, top five university with a great employability and teaching excellence. You know, the UK university uh, have a framework uh, that's called a national higher education framework. Uh, they do have regulator qualification framework. Uh, they do have higher education institution framework. Upon these uh, frameworks, they, the universities have been fall under rankings. So uh, you can have most of the students, uh, if, for example, if a student wants to study a university, definitely that student search in a Google. So they will uh, definitely find, uh, they will definitely know the Times higher education uh, rankings. They, they do are following these frameworks. So Almost all universities in UK are fall upon this framework that is national higher education framework, regulatory qualification framework, and national higher education framework. Uh, these all universities in UK have fall under this framework. That means if you study any course in UK that's been uh, recognized all over the world, even the master's program is a one year, you know, we all know that uh, the master's program in UK is a one year comparing with other English speaking countries like USA, Canada, uh, Australia or Northern Ireland. You can see the master's program is a one year. And uh, so most of them have any concerns that a oh, one year master's program will be uh, valuable even in, in India or any other country. So I am I, I I extending those uh, explanation that is a national higher education framework a regulatory qualification framework that is NHF, uh, NQF, RQF. Uh, all universities have fallen under this framework. So they've been uh, very famous. If a student wants to study in UK, that means recognized all over the world. So upon this framework, uh, these are the top ranked university, that is University of Birmingham, University of Leicester, Cranfield, Liverpool, Manchester universities are top ranked university upon those frameworks and also the affordable university. Uh, affordable university in the sense uh, the uh, cost of studying uh, the tuition fees and uh, the living expenses or in, in that university uh, that's in the sense I explain this uh, mentioned the affordable university the Montfort University University of Northampton even if it is affordable university they're all very good university they have a teaching excellence framework uh, University of Northampton is a gold rated uh, you know, uh, the teaching excellence framework, they have uh, three uh, metrics, that is gold, silver, and bronze. And University of Northampton is a gold-rated university. So even if it is an affordable university, the student can choose uh, with comparing with the top-ranked university. University of Northampton is also a best-ranked uh, university with an affordable university. So uh, coming to the next slide, uh, the tuition fees, academic requirement, English requirement, and the standback option. So the tuition fees are ranged between uh, 8,000 GBP to maximum 25,000 GBP. It's upon the courses they have chosen, and it's upon the university they have chosen. Uh, it's upon the city they have chosen to study. So the tuition fees ranges between a minimum 8,000 GBP to maximum 25,000 GBP. 
And for the academic requirement, uh, this is a basic requirement. It's vary upon the universities. Uh, there's a minimum is 55 percentage for the masters and uh, 60 percentage for the bachelors. I'm quoting one example here. Uh, if the student wants to study any of the university in UK, if the student have more than 60 percentage, he is eligible to study uh, all over the universities in UK. If he have more than 60 percentage. If it is uh, less than 60 percentage, they have very uh, uh, less than comparing with the other university. They have uh, still they have options. So this is a basic one I'm mentioning here, minimum 55 percentage for the master. If they can have less than 55 percentage, they do have still options in uh, University of uh, UK that, for example, University of Law admitting students, those who have uh, less than 55 and uh, above 50. They are accommodating the students uh, in between that range. I'm just explaining that uh, particular example. And for the bachelors, they do have minimum 60 percentage. It's a basic one. Some university, I told you, they have uh, criteria and frameworks. They need to keep up the rankings. So they do accommodate the students, those who have more than 60 percentage. If he have more than 65 percentage, he is eligible to most of the all the universities uh, in UK for studying a bachelor program. There is another case if the scores are below the required marks. For example, if the student doesn't have secured a minimum of 50 percentage, that means less than 50 percentage and a pass mark, they still have options to study in UK. For example, they can choose a pathway programs. That means if a course starts on September or a course starts in January, uh, prior to that course, a six month uh, prior to the course, they can choose a pathway program. They have to study uh, uh, some courses in UK, English assessment, uh, general uh, basic uh, uh, courseworks to how to uh, do the courseworks. They have to uh, take a pathway program to eligible for the bachelor program or even the master's program. If the student doesn't secure a 60 percentage in the, back, uh, in the higher grade 12, uh, they can choose a pathway program. If the student sec don't, doesn't secure minimum 55 percentage, they do have a pathway program. Then they can eligible to the reputed, uh, or the most ranked university, they can go towards the uh, university study in UK. So the international, they do have a lot of opportunities and they have a lot of uh, courses. It's a mandate. Most of the universities have a mandatory criteria that is IELTS overall 6.5 accepted in all universities. They do, they do need this IELTS score, but some universities, very few universities, are waiving the IELTS based on the 12th English score, a medium of instruction. That means a medium of instruction in English, the students studied in a bachelor, they do get an IELTS waiver. And also if, they, if the student doesn't have the medium of instruction, very few universities are offering a university English test so the student can attend those English tests. Uh, some, some universities are offering a free test. Some universities are uh, taking uh, a very uh, few fees, that is uh, less than 50 pounds for registering that English test. Comparing with IELTS exam, it's, it's, it's pretty low. So the student can choose a university English test to waive off the IELTS a band of 6.5 uh, with not less than 5.5. Band means uh, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. I know. I, I think all of them know that band. So they have to secure minimum 5.5 in all of the band. See, GRE is not required for the UK. Uh, it's mainly for the US countries, uh, USA, Canada. The GRE is uh, required for uh, for the UK. They don't. Uh, GRE is not a mandatory uh, requirement. And uh, for the stay back, the student can stay up to 24 months after the graduation. See, the, the UK government is recently uh, announced this uh, stay back option in 2020, April, summer vacation. The UK government introduced the stay back option that is after successful completion. See, there is a condition there. After successful completion of the course, that means a one year of course, the student will get a four year, a four month stay back. I'm repeating. After successful completion of course, I mean one year course, the student will get a four month stay back. So in the first month, the student will get the results. That means if the student successfully completed the program, 
uh, they can apply for the post study work visa that is 24 months so after uh, completion of the course in the next month the results will be published the university will write a mail to the embassy they will uh, revert back to the students with the eligibility for applying the uh, post study work visa and in the remaining two months they will get the post study work visa that means one year four months of stay back plus after getting the post study work visa the student can get uh, to stay in the country for another 24 months that is two years so coming to the next slide uh, everyone wants to know the part time yes the international can work 20 hours per week that means uh, in a study period you know the university for the master's program uh, they do have uh, 15 to 20 hours in a week remaining time they can go for a part time there is a limit that is 20 hours per week uh, that means in the study period and in the holidays you know the university have a holidays uh, in term wise i mean after three months of the course or uh, in a trimesters they do get a holiday maybe a christmas holiday maybe an easter vacation or summer vacation at that time the student can work for 40 hours per week i think for i'm repeating that's for holidays so the wages should be around 7 gbp to 9 gbp there will be there will be a hike in every year it's around 50 pence to one pound there will be a hike if the student is uh, having uh, he's a uh, 25 more than 25 years old he will get 9 to 9.5 or uh, normally 10 pounds uh, and in the night shift you know the students can work also in the night shift uh, they some some employers will offering more than 10 pounds nearly 12 to 13 pounds the student will get that weight in the part time so the, there are different types of jobs on campus jobs and off campus job. Uh, there is a facility, you, you know, the university have their own uh, website for finding these jobs. Uh, they have a library, cafeteria, admission office, tutor assistant, global launch, student ambassador, etc. They can find, the student can find a part-time job through the uh, university on website or they do have a team a placement team in the university they can have an appointment with that team and have a acquaintance with the team and they can find a part-time jobs even off campus job also you know some small medium enterprises have do agreement with the university to get uh, the students for the job so they do have a facility for the off-campus job also for example residential coordinator food chain call center groceries shopping mails of license Job, etc. They do have a lot of opportunity for the part time. Uh, the university will, UK university, they do have a team uh, placement team and uh, they do have a very good uh, website to find those jobs. And also the freelancing contractual jobs are also available if the student is uh, very good uh, uh, in some skills, some sort of skills and management skills or digital marketing. They can do that freelancing job uh, if they are good in so many subjects, they can take any tuitions uh, for the students those who are looking for a uh, uh, tuition i'm sorry looking for a tuition they can uh, take that job that's a freelancing contractual jobs and coming to the living expenses uh, these are the basic uh, amount a maximum is 800 gbp for the accommodation it's depending upon the student's lifestyle if, if any student is an extra vegan maybe it's more than that it's a maximum is 800 gbp Food is maximum 200 uh, miscellaneous, uh, 200 GBP. Overall, it ranges between 400 to 1300 GBP per month. I'm repeating it's upon the student's lifestyle. If they can, they can uh, live below this amount. If they have agree with uh, uh, with any staying with any friends, if they can sharing with the rooms. They, they do can uh, below uh, this amount, below this range. Uh, it's a basic one I'm mentioning here: 400 GBP to 1300 GBP per month. And uh, explaining more about the post-study work opportunity, uh, previously I mentioned that uh, stay up to 24 months after the course completion to find a job. See, uh, the university, not the university is offering, the UK government is offering this 24 months after the course, successful course completion, they can apply for the uh, post-study work visa. The university have their own visa compliance team. They can uh, find help from that team also to getting that post-study work visa. And there are some other visas, I'm explaining that the student can apply for a tier five temporary work 
GAE visa that is government authorized exchange visa and can stay up to another 24 additional months that is the university have a medium uh, memorandum of understanding or they do have an agreement with the external bodies uh, international bodies like british council even the uk government they do have an internship programs uh, even the multinational companies they do have very good internship program so uh, some very good university have an agreement with these mncs professional bodies so they are offering the students a uh, internship program that is a government authorized exchange visa so they can find those programs uh, also the university team will help students to find those programs and they can apply for that and there's some frameworks for that they need to clear those frameworks to getting those uh, tier 5 temporary worker gae visa and they can stay up to another 24 additional months after the post study work visa and also the another option is student can apply for the startup visa to stay up to 24 months and can switch to innovator visa i'm explaining that is uh, the student can apply for a startup visa that is if the student have a very good business proposal they uh, the university have an entrepreneurship team or the students union having an entrepreneurship team so they can have take an appointment with that team and you have to explain your business proposal and there the that team will help the students to find a financial sources if he uh, successfully got that financial source they can apply for the startup visa with the help of a solicitor in uk so the uk university will help the students uh, for the financial sources if they have very good business proposal and they can uh, get a financial sources and apply for the startup visa so they will get uh, if they're successful in that they will get a 24 additional months again they will get a 24 months an extra stay and can switch to innovator visa that means in that stay that means in the staying in two 24 months they are getting a very good financial returns they can apply for the, this is a source there is a source right a financial return they can apply for a switch to innovator visa they can apply for a innovator visa so they they can stay up to another three years that means the government considers this student is a valuable for their country that means a very good financial sources so uk government will help those students to get that innovator visa so all together startup visa 24 months if you have a very good financial sources they can switch to innovator visa for three years all together five years they can get a permanent residence that means indefinite leave to remain. They don't need to. They don't need any visa for coming to UK. So these are the options uh, in the United Kingdom. And here the Netherlands. There is another option. If the student completing a program in UK, they do have opportunity in Netherlands. How it's possible? If the student study a university or subject rank. See the subject rank. Some university have a subject ranking. It's fall under top 200 world ranking in the sense times higher education, THE ranking, uh, QS ranking, Shanghai ranking. It's below 200. The student can apply for a job search visa in Netherlands. They do have very MNC companies over there. So they can take advantage of that country also, Netherlands, after studying in UK. See, a lot of opportunities. Also in Canada. For the post completion of course in uk they do get a very good credit after completing a course in uk uh, for applying for the express entry visa i do have a lot of students uh, after studying uh, after completion of the course they went to canada after getting the very good uh, score in the uh, for applying for the express entry visa they are still in canada and for the australia it's a very it's a it's, it's, it's upon a skilled independent visa the australia have a framework that is they have been shorter skilled like uh, engineering related job they have a, a a shorter skill independent visa that means if the student have a very good experience uh, in the engineering sector they after and after that completion of the course in uk they can apply for a skilled independent visa in australia they easily will get an australian visa so there are a lot of opportunities after the successful completion of the course and also note that uh, they still have more opportunity to get jobs in uk middle east and india with very good pay scale and coming to the next slide, i lately uh, previously i mentioned uh, the permanent residence 
that is uh, indefinite leave to remain. That means after the student have to stay for five years in a tier two visa. That means tier two visa is a work visa to eligible for a permanent resident. For example, if the student successfully completed the course in UK, and uh, you know the university is offering a placement opportunity, if the employer uh, is happy with your services, they will give you a tier two visa. So if the student can secure the tier two visa and stay up to five years in that visa, they are eligible to for a PR permanent residence. And another option is student have to stay for more than 10 years on tier four, they are eligible for a PR. See, if the student wants to study a bachelor program, again, he do an another bachelor program. It's all together eight years or seven years. They can apply for a master's program, which again, two years, two to three years. Now it's been a tier four. For staying up to 10 years, they can get, they will get, definitely they will get a permanent residence. And also previously I mentioned this uh, student can apply for a startup visa and stay up to 24 months and uh, having a very good financial returns, they can switch to innovator visa. That's one is here. They will get a, el eligible for the permanent residence. So not, uh, not that uh, you can have an approximately 50,000 sponsored companies where the student can apply for a full-time job. That means, uh, you know, the UK university, that means there are a lot of uh, 50,000 50, sponsored companies. And most of the 50,000 companies and nearly 20 to 25,000, they do have agreement with the UK university for sponsoring the students to get uh, a job, a full-time job after the successful completion of the course. That, that's explaining about the post-study work visas uh, details and the permanent residence. And coming to uh, this slide, uh, top five popular ministers of UK. We all know that our former president, the former prime minister of India, Indira Gandhi, is an alumni of UK. And the economic scientist, our former prime minister, Manmohan Singh, uh, also an alumni of the UK. And the uh, popular figures like Varun Dhawan, uh, Parnidhi Chopra, Arnab Goswami, they are the top five popular alumni of the UK. And the benefits of studying in UK, that is UK is the world uh, most popular study destination. After these coming, uh, after the previous slides, you all know that UK is a very good opportunity, it's the most popular study destination. UK University are among the best in the world. I explained to you that uh, there is a framework, a national MHF, NQF, RQF. These all universities are fall under these regulations and been uh, valuable and it's being recognized all over the world. And the shorter duration of course, you all know that the master's program is a one year program and it's normally it reduces your living expenses. Uh, the shorter duration of course reduces the cost uh, if you are studying in UK. The UK has a multicultural environment. Uh, explaining my experience, I studied a master's in international business and management at Nottingham University. And I do, I have a 15 international uh, from various uh, for studying that particular course. See, 15 international in one class. So you have an exposure to uh, get acquaintance with the multicultural uh, cultural difference. That would be a very valuable while you are going for an MNC company, you will be facing those uh, multicultural issues. So if you are acquaintance with these and beyond them, it will be uh, very highly beneficial uh, for the students. Uh, to experience this multicultural environment. And UK is a home of English, you know, the management courses, even any courses, you know, for, for uh, working in an MNC, uh, you need a very good communication skill. So it is the best option. It's an English speaking country. UK is a home of English. The students can take advantages of that uh, opportunities. And many universities are offers placement here. So if the student after the completion of the course, they can take advantages of placement here and they can uh, make sure the tier two worker visa from the employer. And easy admission and visa procedure, uh, it's normally take a maximum of two months if their uh, applications are everything perfect, perfectly scanned all documents, they don't have any issues with any documents or any uh, paperwork. So it's maximum two months uh, for getting an offer from the university, it's nearly take, uh, <laughs> minimum of seven working days and maximum of uh, two weeks uh, because some courses need a confirmation from the academic uh, teams like professors or any staff, academic staff, they need a final confirmation whether the student needs to study here. So in some, for the, some courses only. So that means I'm saying for getting an offer letter, it's maximum two weeks. 
and uh, they, if they have any conditions to satisfy, if they're satisfying those conditions in one month, and after applying for the visa, it's a maximum of two, two months. Uh, that means an easy admission and visa procedure and possibility of admission to university without IELTS. I already mentioned from universities, uh, without IELTS, they can study in UK. These are the benefits. So uh, from the previous slides, we have been experienced that whether it's tellable all year long, no, it's not. Uh, you'll be able to experience all four seasons, uh, chilly winter, autumn season, uh, spring season, summer season, autumn season. These are the four seasons, maximum 10 degrees Celsius to uh, uh, maximum of 30 degrees Celsius. It's, uh, uh, it's adaptable for the Indians, those who are going to UK. And UK university tuition fees is high, not at all. It's not, uh, it, it, the students are planning in the right way. For example, I already mentioned the course fees is around minimum 8,000 GBP to 25,000 GBP. If they, some, most of the universities are offering a scholarship. So they can take advantage of that. And also uh, uh, they have a, uh, what we say that the, um, explaining about the installment option. Some universities are accepting the installment option so they can take advantage of that after uh, acquaintance with the administrative finance, student finance team, they will get an installment option. So the UK university's uh, tuition fees is high is a myth. The reality is if, if the student plans in the right way, they can study, it's not cost a fortune. And accommodation and cost of living is expensive in the UK. It depends upon the lifestyle. I, will, I always told every student, that if you are an extra vegan, you, it will be very expensive to stay in UK, if, if they can manage all the uh, expenses, it's very pretty easy to cope up with the uh, financial student finance. Uh, finding job is difficult, not at all. I already mentioned the students uh, have an option to apply and get jobs in 50,000 companies. They do have agreement with the MNC companies and small medium enterprises to MNC companies, they do have options. And the UK getting PR, I already mentioned, it's possible with the number of job opportunities, one year masters are recognized across the world. I told uh, NHF and RQF uh, frameworks, IELTS, GRE, and GMAT is a mandatory to, to study in UK. No, there is not at all required for UK. GMAT is required only in the top business school like Oxford, Imperial College, uh, top ranked university. They are considering the GMAT because the, you know there are a lot number of applications will come, overwhelming number of applications will come. So they will consider a GMAT. For the top business schools and IELTS is waived in many universities, the students can study uh, without IELTS upon the 12th English score, a medium of instruction, or, or the uh, university English test, they can waive off the IELTS. So, the, so uh, the next is a visa fund requirement and sources. Uh, you know, the visa fund, uh, the student needs to show uh, that is the outstanding tuition fees plus living expenses. Uh, and that amount should be uh, 20 days older in account. If they are using a savings account, they have to show a minimum 28 days mature period of outstanding tuition fees plus living expenses. If a student get an offer letter from the university uh, to secure the place, student has to pay a minimum, uh, minimum maximum of uh, 5,000 pounds. So the tuition fees is, if a, for example, if a tuition fees is uh, 15,000 pounds, and uh, after getting an offer letter, the uh, university asked the students to pay the initial deposit. That means a 50, uh, 5,000 pounds. So the remaining, the outstanding tuition fees is 10,000 pounds, plus the living expenses. You know, the UK uh, government have uh, a standard living expenses. Uh, in the inner London, it's around 12,006 GBP. And in the outer London, 9,207 GBP. So the outstanding tuition fees is 10,000 and the living expense, if the student chooses to study in uh, inner London, they have to show 12,006 GBP. So altogether, 22,006 GBP to show in the bank account is for a 28 days older. If he using a savings bank account or if the scenario is different, if the student wants to show a fixed deposit, they can, uh, visa funds need to be 28 days older in the account. And uh, if the student have an education loan, they don't need to show for a 28 days older. If they get a loan sanction letter in the next day, they can submit that uh, document in the university. So they are eligible to uh, get the visa uh, for the UK. So I'm explaining some scenario that is if the students are showing uh, 
a parent's account, they need to show some other documents like a parent's court uh, guardianship, court of guardianship uh, affidavit needed, maybe a birth certificate needed. Uh, it's upon the scenarios, the different scenarios. Many how the basically the student needs to show outstanding tuition fees plus living expenses. And if they are using a savings account, the visa funds to be 28 days older in account. And if they are showing a fixed deposit, the visa funds need to be 28 days older and to be mature and make sure that amount should be available at any point of time. Maybe the, you know, the fixed deposit have a maturity days. Uh, they can't withdraw the amount. So in that case, the, they can't use that fund. Only the mature fixed deposit funds and available at any point of time and need to be 28 days older, they can use these uh, for the, to eligible for the visa requirement uh, for studying in UK. So the next is offer letter turnaround time. Mostly in university, I told you 24 hours, uh, if they have very good uh, uh, application, that means in the sense they have submitting all documents perfectly scanned. Uh, some university have a very good turnaround time. It's that is 24 hours maximum. I told uh, two weeks, uh, 15 working days uh, from day of application submission. And the visa decision time is uh, you have, we all know super priority visa takes 24 working hours. Clearly, see uh, working hours. That means a minimum three days, uh, not maximum three days. Uh, for the priority visa, it takes uh, five working days. Normal visa takes normally 15 to 30 working days. So the general. Uh, knowledge for uh, the offer turnaround time and visa decision time. And for the document checklist, every student have to uh, submit uh, these mentioned documents, that is passport, uh, grade 10 mark sheet, 12 mark sheet, uh, LOR, that is a letter of recommendation. That is the student studied a bachelor's uh, in any university, they have to submit a recommended letter from the uh, professors or the principal uh, with a letterhead of the university or the college having a phone number and a registered email <coughs> domain, then only the uni university has to verify the student's uh, genuinity. If they have any uh, doubts regarding their application, they need to verify with the recommended letter, that is LOR. They have to submit two to three letter of recommendation for studying the master's program. And for the bachelor's program, uh, two is uh, is enough, uh, two letter of recommendation from the principal and the class teacher. And SOP is also a mandatory, that is statement of purpose. Uh, student needs to write uh, a minimum 700 to 1000 words uh, that how passionate he is to study this course. And he needs to explain his career aspirations, everything he needs to explain his uh, himself, he needs to explain himself or herself, the student needs to explain their uh, educational background here, ambitions, dream, how passionate to study that course in UK. They have to uh, submit a very strong statement of purpose. And for the bachelor's uh, students, if a bachelor student wants to study a master's in UK, they have to show individual certificates, a transcript, consolidated mock sheet, degree certificate. See, the consolidated mark sheet means uh, all semester mark sheet in a single paper having uh, the grading scale. See, every university have a different framework for calculating the percentage. Uh, the student needs to submit the consolidated mark sheet, a mandatory document. Individual, some university don't provide any individual certificates, so they can have a transcript or a consolidated mark sheet along with a degree certificate. See, if the student is recently passed out, for example, in 2021 or last uh, month of 2021, he passed, he, uh, he can also apply in UK with a professional degree certificate. If they don't have a degree certificate, they can apply for a professional and uh, apply to the UK university. They do accept the provisional degree certificate for recently passed out students. If the student is passed in 2090 or 2020, they have to submit the degree certificate. Uh, if they are applying for a master's program. If they're applying for a bachelor's program, uh, 10th and grade 12 is enough. Uh, and for applying for the master's, they definitely need a transcript or consolidated mark sheet, professional degree certificate uh, for the recent passed out students. Uh, the rest of the students have to submit a degree certificate, some mandatory one. And uh, IELTS, PTE, Duolingo. These PTE and Duolingo are uh, private English testing bodies. Some universities, uh, most of the universities accept IELTS and PTE. Duolingo have some restrictions. Some very few universities are accepting 
Duolingo. It's a private uh, English testing body. It just cost 4,000 rupees, a Duolingo test. So uh, some very uh, few universities are accepting Duolingo test. Uh, most of the universities are accepting IELTS and PTE. Uh, also, if they doesn't have this uh, testing certificate, uh, they can apply. Uh, some universities are accepting 12th English score. I already mentioned a medium of instruction or university internal English test. They do accept those certificate also. And also, the student needs to submit a mandatory and the work experience. Uh, if the student have an education gap after completing the bachelor's course, if they have an exp uh, they have an education gap, they have to submit a work experience because. University wants to know that uh, the students uh, after successful completion of the course, what did he do? If whether the student uh, will fall up in any criminal conviction, they can't find out, right? So they need, a, a, an edu if the student have an edu education gap, they need to submit a work experience certificate. Uh, that, that's why I put it in as optional. If they do have an education gap, they have to submit work experience. If they doesn't have an education gap, they don't need to submit a work experience. So that's all about my UK general presentations. If you have any questions, please let me know. I feel free to ask. Yes, it was nice presentation, Arjun. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, just I want to clarify when we are applying for any country, the CV should be molded as per their country format, right? Uh, no, it's not like that. It's a general CV, it's acceptable. They just need to know the whole picture of the students. They need to verify it. So the general CV, there is, there is no particular format or not at all, they need it. They're applying for a course. They just need a profile student. That's enough. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. For the job, they will expect this. Yes, for the job. Yes, exactly. Job, there is a criteria. Uh, for applying for any uh, MNC companies or even in a, any small medium enterprises in UK, uh, the student needs to prepare a very good CV upon their format. So the university have a placement team. If the student wants to apply uh, for any companies, they can prepare a general CV and have an appointment with the university teams. They will guide the students how to prepare a job based. Even for the part-time job, they do have some pull-ups. So they can, uh, the student can easily, uh, they have to ask those services. Uh, they can't service freely. The student has to ask for the services. They will definitely help the students to prepare that uh, CV and for as the per, covering letter. Yes, yes, as per the employer's needs. Yes, yes. Yeah. Here, one of the candidate is asking, do we need to submit a statement of intent when applying for the master's? Yeah, of course. Statement of purpose is an important document. Uh, the, you know, the UK, you more, all universities in UK needs the statement of purpose. They need to verify how passionate this student is to study this course in UK, this particular university. Why don't they study in other English speaking countries? So they need to know how passionate the student is for studying this course, uh, particularly this university. Uh, so the student needs to explain why I choose this university, because this university is offering a very good placement opportunity. They have a very good ranking. They will, would have a very uh, academic staff. Uh, their library is very good. So they need to explain a lot in the statement of purpose. They will definitely accept the student. Uh, see, there are, uh, I'm adding uh, some more details. If, uh, for example, I do have a strange experience, that is a student who passed the 12, uh, grade 12, and he doesn't have any uh, bachelor's program. And he have a very good experience of more than eight to 10 years of experience in the managerial sector. See, most of the university don't accept this student, generally, in the sense. But he write a very good SOP to the academic staff. And they consider his students passionate. And they do give directly masters to the student without the bachelor's. I understand. That. Yeah, it's a very uh, rare case. And for generally, we need a bachelor's for eligible for the master's program. So I'm just explaining the how important the statement of purpose is. Another candidate, uh, yes, she's asking how to get the scholarship. Scholarship, uh, some universities have a uh, framework. That is, if they apply for the university, they will directly get the scholarship upon to the academic percentage of the score, academic percentage. 
they do have directly give uh, for example in university of northampton they if the student have more than 60 percentage they will get a 10 percentage of scholarship and if they have more than 64 percentage and below 74 percentage they do get 20 percentage of scholarship and if the student have more than 75 percentage they will get a 30 percentage of scholarship it's nearly around four lakh rupees without applying for the scholarship directly get those scholarship in the offer letter uh, the, mostly the courses are uh, range between uh, 12000 to 15000 gbp if they have more than 75 percentage they will directly get a 4000 gbp that's nearly 4 lakh rupees uh, so the student can study uh, within 10 lakhs in university of northampton and northampton have a gold rating in the excellence framework see uh, it's uh, it's not uh, uh, it's a very good option if the student have and some universities they do have another framework like if they are eligible if the academic teams uh, know that yeah this student is eligible then they will give an application form to the student portal eligible students will get a form through the university portal and they have to fill up and apply for that and uh, some university they will give a test after getting an offer letter they will uh, send a link university test they have to attend that test and they need to successfully complete uh, for example uh, 20 questions are there in university of law they will send a test link to the students and they have to attend that test and correcting a 12 questions they will eligible for the interview session and after successfully clearing the interview session, they will directly get 5,000 GBP. That's nearly uh, 5 lakh rupees. So, uh, depend upon university, they have different frameworks. Uh, yeah. yeah. I understand. Uh, thank you, Arjun. Uh, we are running out of time. <laughs> anyway, oh, we have another four days to discuss yeah. more on this uh, roadmap. Yeah. 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 You can ask me, if you have any queries, please uh, email to me. I, I believe you have my email ID. Yes, it is so there. Can, yeah, yeah, I can follow up with that. You can passing uh, the queries through uh, your email. Uh, I will be sharing the telephone numbers also. If they want, they will interact with you directly. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm more than happy to help. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. It's yeah. our pleasure. Now it's our time to give a vote of thanks. Now I request Dr. Neeraj Gupta to deliver a vote of thanks. Shall I stop the share the screen? Ah, you can stop the screen. Dr. Neeraj? Thank you, sir. Yes, please. I, Dr. Neeraj Gupta, on behalf of Civil Engineering Department, MIT School of Engineering and Technology, MIT University, Haryana, would like to extend gratitude and regards to the management of MIT University. A special thanks to the Honorable VC, sir, Dr. P.V. Sarma, Pro Vice Chancellor, Madam Dr. Padma Kali Banerjee, and the Director, Madam Dr. Sanli Vaskar Bajaj, for allowing us to conduct the event and providing the required infrastructure for the same. Further, I may like to express our sincere thanks to Mr. Mr. Arjun LM from Win Your English and Consultancy for giving an excellent talk on the visa application process in UK. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for Mr. Arjun LM for giving us insight about the various career and education opportunity in UK. I would also like to appreciate the efforts made by the head of civil engineering department, Dr. Naveen BP for planning and organizing the workshop. My special regards to all the faculty members and non-teaching staff of the ASET for their time and cooperation in organizing this workshop. I also like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all the participants for attending the workshop. Without your participation, this event would have not been possible. So thank you all. And uh, tomorrow we have a session on the USA student, student visa roadmap by Ms. Sveta. So that is also a very wonderful session. So join us on time at 2 o'clock. So thank you all. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I request all participants please fill your uh, feedback before uh, leaving. And this. Uh, may also invite all the participants uh, turn on their camera for the group photograph. Dr. Praveen, we have another four days. No problem. Okay. Okay. Yeah.
thank, thank you, you neeraj thank you arjun thank you. thanks a lot thank you thank you so much for giving yeah. this opportunity thank you bye bye